Zoom on them. You have to zoom on the caress so that you can see you. Um, where's the grandchildren's one? Because we want that going in the grave. Ready? I know. Ready? Thank you. Can you take some pictures of me? Okay, thank you. That one, that's Colette and family. Can you take that one again, please? Because there's a message. I 
Same thing as question again. I like your funny no Jesus Christ, you said, I am the resurrection of life. The man who believes in me will live even if he die. And every living person who puts it his faith in me will never suffer eternal death. Lord, our response shall be, Lord, hear our prayer. Lord, hear our prayer. Lord, work at the death of Lazarus, your friend, comfort us in our soul, we pray to the Lord. 
You raise the dead to life. Give our dear sister eternal life. We pray to the Lord. You promised paradise to the thief who repented. Bring our dear sister and our mother to the joys of heaven. We pray to the Lord. Our sister was washed clean in baptism and anointed with the oil of salvation. Give her fellowship with all your saints. We pray to the Lord. She was nourished with your body and blood. Grant her a place at the table in your heavenly kingdom. We ask, we pray to the Lord. Comfort us in our soul. Let our faith be our consolation and eternal life our food. We pray to the Lord, our Father. to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. Almighty God, through the death of your Son on the cross, you have overcome death for us. Through his burial and resurrection from the dead, you have made a grave a holy place, and restored to us eternal life. We pray for those who die believing in Jesus, and are buried with him in the hope of rising again, especially our dear sister Andrea and God of the living and the dead. May those who faithfully believe in you on earth praise you forever in the joy of heaven. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. As we are bidding our sister farewell, we call on one of the children to render her the final words of Consolation to the family, to give all the life history of our mother, the will of you. So we call on the family to come mm -hmm. and speak to their mother. The eulogy of Andrea Andrews, May Fontaine. She was born in Point Carib on 6th of October 1931 the second daughter of seven girls to Lydia and Emmanuel Fontaine. Her siblings being Agatha, Teresa, Emilia, all now deceased, Monica, Helen and Cecilia. Lydia and Emmanuel raised the girls with a deep religious background and a sense of pride and respect. Though raised in a strict household, mum and her siblings enjoyed a happy childhood. Mum loved school, so when she left at 60, she had a teaching post for two years at Point Carrick School. She later got a job as a bookkeeper at the Bagatelle Estate, a role which she also enjoyed. Growing up, mum and her sisters were close, and although later on in life they all lived in different countries, they still remained equally as close. Whenever the Fontaine girls got together, there was always a lot of laughter, with shared memories of their childhood and recalling the many experiences they had growing up. Their elder sister, Auntie Agatha, died early at 36 and so mum took on the role of big sister and supported her siblings throughout their life. Mum met the love of her life, P.C. Andrews, at a cricket match in the village. He was from Maho, but he was working in Grand Bay. She later found out his name was Watson, which she and her sisters didn't like, so they called him Watty instead. Dad's version was that while she was watching him play cricket, she was so attracted by his lovely legs that he fainted and fell in love with her. <laughs> One day, Dad came to the house to ask if he could take Mum to the village dance. But her mother, Granny, said she didn't allow her girls out with a stranger, but agreed she would, she would allow him to take her if two of her sisters went along, to which Dad agreed. They were all thrilled because they weren't usually allowed to go to dances, and Mum said she danced with him all night and had a lovely time. After the dance, they began writing to each other and their relationship developed. One day, walking home from Sunday Mass, Dad proposed and they were married in Grand Bay Catholic Church in December 5th, 1953. It was a big wedding with a hundred guests. 
Mum was delayed and arrived two hours late. Apparently everyone was telling Dad that she wasn't coming, but he said he never had any doubt that she was come, brave man. And they remained happily married for over 57 years until his death. Their union was blessed with a daughter Flavia in 1955, followed by a son Derek, which caused much rejoicing as he was the first boy born to the family for two generations. In 1957, Dad travelled to England for three years, or so he thought, to work for and hoping to return and build their own home and make a better life for his family in Dominica. Unknown to Dad, Mum was pregnant again and another daughter, Cyrilla, known as Grena, was born in February 1958. Sadly, she died at 10 months old. So Dad wrote to ask Mum to come to England to visit him. Mum was very distraught about the thought of leaving Flavia and Derek, but after speaking to her mother, who assured her the children would be fine with them, she reluctantly went to England, leaving Flavia and Derek with their grandmother. When Mum arrived in England, they lived in a shared house with relatives in West London, and Mum found work in a factory. Once again, she was reunited and lived with her sister Teresa, each helping each other with childcare. Whilst in England, after having two more children, Claudette and Catherine, in 1952, she, they decided to settle there, but Mum was miserable without her other children. So they bought a house in Red in Berkshire and were reunited with Flavia and Derek, completing the family. Her sister Teresa's family also moved to Reading and the two families were always together. In 1982, after discussions with her siblings, it was agreed that their widowed mother, Lydia, would also come to England to live with Mum. And together, she and Teresa looked after their mother until she died in 1970. Mum stayed at home uh, with the younger children and then returned to work part-time at a pharmacy for many years. Mum was an excellent seamstress and could also knit really well. She made all her children's clothes and her own, and for a while she did some contract dressmaking before working for herself, making dresses, suits, curtains, but specialising in wedding and bridesmaid dresses until she retired. Of course, she was proud to have made the bridal bridesmaid dresses for her three daughters when they married. Mum was a member of the Dominican Association in Reading after Hurricane David, and also a member of the Dominican singing group, Sicily. Mum made all the costumes for the group without a pattern. She loved singing in the group and enjoyed the many performances around the UK, even creating the gestures we made to interpret the Creole songs. When Cicero recorded their second album, a portrait of Mum dancing was used as an inspiration for the album cover. She last performed in London for the 40th Independence Anniversary in 2018, aged 87, with as much energy and style as she had done some 20 years earlier. <laughs> In 1990, Flavia gave them their first grandchild, Andre, and until he was five, he was very much doted on. Mum was further blessed with six more grandchildren, Jamal, Nicole, Tahira, Ishara, Alicia, and Malachi, and two great-grandchildren, Jaden and Nyla. After retirement, Mum and Dad finally left England and built their dream home in Wallhouse, Dominica. They spent many happy years and settled in Dominica, returning to England only for family events and to see their grandchildren. In 2003, they celebrated their 50th wedding anniversary in England with family and friends, had an anniversary mass followed by a lovely reception and a stay in a honeymoon suite. It was such a special day and they both looked as much in love then as on their original wedding day, although I wasn't there. Um, in 2010, following a nine month stay in England and only a few weeks before they were due to leave, dad passed away unexpectedly. Mum was bereft, her soulmate was gone, and the family returned to Dominica with Mum to bury her beloved Wati in the land he loved so much. For the next 10 years, Mum managed to carry on without Dad, but he was never far from her mind and her heart. Mum always had a habit of calling Andrew whenever she dropped something. <laughs> 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 always started. People recognise me. I am her daughter, I know how she said. Even after he passed, theirs was a love that was so strong, and she often spoke about how much she missed him and longed to see him again. She had a lot of support in Dominica from her friends and neighbours. Her sister Monica shared Sunday lunches with her and would drive her to church or town to go shopping. She continued to visit the family in the UK and celebrated her 80th birthday in the UK with her children and grandchildren in 2011. And we would come to Dominica to spend time with her whenever we could. Mum loved to travel and enjoyed holidays, especially visiting her sister. So often took the opportunity when she was in the UK to spend time with her sister Amelia in Bradford or her sister Helen in France. In 2016, the sudden death of her sister Amelia left Mum very sad because she was unwell at the time and unable to travel to the UK for the funeral. She visited her sister in Grenada and her last trip abroad was in 2018 to celebrate her baby sister Cecilia's 50th wedding anniversary in the USA. 
In 2017, Hurricane Maria devastated Dominica. Fortunately, Mum was in the UK at the time, but her home was destroyed and needed extensive repairs. Mum was longing to see her home again, but remained in the UK for two years until the work was completed, then returned with Flavia in 20 September 2019. Emma, Mum's grandniece, moved into the flat below Mum's house to offer additional support to her on our behalf. Mum had a very happy, warm personality, which people were always drawn to, and she had many friends. Many people also turned to her for advice. Mum took great pride in her appearance, and she really enjoyed the opportunity to dress up for an evening out, whether for a dance or just for dinner, and she had her own glamorous style. Throughout her life, she always ensured that her hair, makeup and nails were perfect and loved to pamper herself with massages and pedicures. She loved to cook and entertain people and enjoyed dancing. And there were many parties in the Andrews household in England and also in Dominica over the years. To be honest, it didn't take much. She only had to knock two tins together and mum would be up and dancing. <laughs> Throughout, anybody got a tip? To, so throughout 2020 and the pandemic, we all spent a lot of time calling and video linking with mum, which in itself presented some challenges, as mum was all, always kept putting the phone to her ear instead of looking at it. <laughs> Luckily, Dominique had things under control. For a long while, she could enjoy life as normal, except for the occasional need to wear a mask. However, during that year, her sister Teresa suddenly died in Grenada, and mum was again unable to attend her funeral due to COVID restrictions which affected her greatly as this was the sister she was closest to. Mum remained cheerful and generally well. We had plans a surprise trip for her to spend her 90th birthday with us this year, but that was not meant to be, as following admittance to hospital on the 17th of August 2021, she passed away. Our cousins Marcia and Emma were both with her at the end, and so it was a great comfort to us all to hear that her final passing was very peaceful and without pain. Throughout her life, Mum was a devout Roman Catholic and prayer was part of her daily life. When not at church, she loved to watch EWTN to pray the Divine Mercy Rosie at three, and she was fortunate to see Pope Francis in Rome in 2013. Mum always said that she was not afraid of dying and was ready to meet her Lord. Mum said that she wanted five children and to live in a big house, and that God had given her everything that she had wanted. Mum lived a long and happy life with the man of her dreams. When they were together, nothing else mattered, and not many people have a, had a love like they had. Mm -hmm. To add to their happiness, they have numerous long-lasting friendships. Mum had several grand nieces, nieces, and nephews who will all miss her very much. We would like to remember Mum the way she once said that she would like to be remembered. As a joyful and free person, very happy and social, I enjoyed parties, dancing, cooking, and reading also. I love to entertain friends and family. Mum leaves behind her four children, seven grandchildren, two great-grandchildren, three sisters, and so many people who loved her. To our beloved mum, we love you and will miss you greatly. There are so many memories that we have and the times you made us laugh, sometimes not intentionally. You know, we know you love your God and he loves you. He has blessed you so much and you've never taken it for granted. We pray that all your loved ones are with you. Thank you for the love and support that you gave us. In our hearts, we know that you are reunited with dad and that you can finally rest in peace with God. Safe journey home, forever in our hearts. Flavia, Derek, Claudette and Kathy. Mm -hmm. <laughs>
Thank you. 